Hello? Grandma? It's it's me, Jake. How are you? Jake? It's It's been so long. Y- you sound different. Older. Yeah, it has been a while. Anyway, well, I'm, I'm kind of in trouble. I'm in Chicago right now, and a few guys just robbed me. I really need money to get back home safe. Oh, no. And the thing is, I, I really don't want my parents to find out about this, to worry them. Do you think you could help me? It's urgent. Banks do everything they can to keep your account safe. And that includes helping you recognize scams like the one we just saw. This one is called the grandmother scam. And like other common schemes, it follows a pretty set pattern. Knowing these tactics that someone might use to mislead you will keep your finances that much more secure. Scams take advantage of your natural tendency to be helpful, to follow the rules. They play off of your emotions, things like fear and sympathy. The goal is to pressure you into doing something you probably wouldn't do normally. Let's take a look at how scams are usually structured. The first sign to look for is when someone contacts you unsolicited. You'll get a phone call, an email, or maybe a pop-up window, and it'll usually come out of the blue. Often, it's from someone who seems legitimate, someone like your grandchild or your insurance company. Sign two is when the person tries to scare you. They might pretend to be the IRS and tell you you're in trouble to intimidate you into sharing details like your credit card number or your bank password. Which leads us to sign three, when they try to give a sense of urgency, something you have to do immediately. They might say your computer's infected and a technician has to get access to your files right away. When the message is unexpected, scary, and urgent, these are telltale clues that something's not quite right. So. What do you do when you notice these signs? First, resist the pressure to respond quickly. Never wire money after a suspicious request or share important bank details. Instead, hang up and contact someone you know is legitimate, like someone at your bank or, in this case, your grandson's parents. If it's your bank, you can click the contact link on their website and get an official representative on the line. Some banks even have a link where you can report suspicious emails. And remember, you should look out for scams with your telephone or cable companies too, not just your bank account. Scammers can use other accounts to find a backdoor into your banking information, so it pays to be on the lookout for these schemes no matter what kind of information is at stake.